Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Esther. I want to thank my returning subscribers for coming back. And for my new subscribers, welcome to Unfiltered with E. On this video, I will be talking about different life lessons that I've learned in my 20s so far. So for those of you who don't know, I am 21 years old. I turned 21 on May 1st of this year. So now y'all can't forget my birthday. <laughs> but anyway, um, for that, me and three of my really close friends, we went to Puerto Rico and just had a great time. That will be um, a video for another day. Um, so this, well, these lessons will be a compilation of obviously life experiences and different lessons that I learned from other people, you know, that have influenced my life so far. And obviously it's hard to compile everything since I'm still going through my 20s and I plan on still learning more things. But this is what I've learned so far and I thought I'd share with you guys. If I'm looking down, it's cause my iPad is here and I have written down a few notes so let's get into it lesson number one is you can't figure it all out you cannot have it all figured out and you're not supposed to have it all figured out so um just a little backstory about myself when i turned 18 graduated from high school i um me and a really close friend moved into an apartment together and one of the reasons why i personally moved was because things at home weren't really going the best and i was going through that phase where i didn't want anyone telling me what to do you know anyone of authority not just my parents obviously anyone <laughs> I was like, I'm grown now, I don't really need y'all. So I thought that the best way to be free was, at least the first step, was to get an apartment or get my own space. So um, most people, once they graduate out of high school, go straight to college, which is what I did. I went straight to college. I was planning on majoring in psychology. <laughs> and um, yeah, during that time, I basically went through so many changes that molded my 20s right now. That's kind of why I brought that up. And one of the biggest change was I got into a relationship. Um, so, I met um, my ex when I was 19 and literally like a month after I turned 19 and we um, started dating and then eventually moved in together. The whole situation was just, we were both kind of screwed over by people in our lives so financially it made more sense if we just lived together but anyway so that's what happened we started living together and when i turned 20 we had moved where i live now not this apartment but like the city that i live in now um i had no direction whatsoever i feel like after looking back and after going through therapy and whatnot i now i know now that what had happened was i lost um identity i thought that i knew what i was doing even though i knew i didn't know what i was doing that makes no sense at all but for those who know no anyway i was going job to job to job because nothing fulfilled me and i felt like I was supposed to be way ahead, as in I felt like I wasn't where I needed to be in life. Turning 20, I felt 
that's two decades on earth. I'm supposed to already have it figured out. I'm supposed to have my finances set. But that's when I feel like I started putting so much pressure on myself because one of the things that I had planned was go to college, get married, have kids by 25. So in my mind, I was like, oh, the clock is ticking, ticking, ticking. You only have five years. You're supposed to have this and this and this and that <laughs> right now. That's not true. And I am working so hard right now at 21 to give myself grace. It's hard to appreciate what you have when you're constantly living in the future, when you're constantly living in the what ifs, because that's what I was doing. I was like, what if I had done this differently? And what if I um, had, just being honest, what if I hadn't gotten into this relationship? <laughs> I would have definitely gotten a lot further in life. At least that's what mentally I kept telling myself. Lesson number two. Don't expect people to do for you what you are willing to do for them. Just don't. <laughs> that is so hard. I'm still processing that to this day. In the real world, you can do something for someone and it's almost like frowned upon to expect something back you know so i learned this the hard way when it comes to friendships the friends that i have had throughout my life have served a purpose and i appreciate each and every single one of them i've also learned so much <laughs> from those friendships and one of the hard lessons was you cannot always expect something back and that's okay hard pill to swallow you know however um when you stop expecting things you are less and less and less disappointed lesson number three Mental health is wealth. <laughs> Mental health is wealth. You hear that all over. You know, you see that everywhere on social media, everywhere. Mental health, mental health, mental health. And I'm so glad that we're just not talking about it. Me being Congolese, African, when you talk about mental health, if you know, you know. But for the ones that don't know, I will elaborate. When you talk about mental health, go pray. Pray it out, pray it off, you know, or you're weak. Like, what are you talking about? This is a white people thing. Um, and for the longest time, I could not pinpoint what this was, how I was feeling. I could not pinpoint it to one thing, which is why I'm so glad I took psychology classes that I took because um, when the professor would go through different you know topics and like explain in detail I would catch myself like oh this feels too personal like what but now I knew that someone else knows about it and not only that but also I know what to call it you know it's so much easier when you can actually go ahead and label something. We, we as a society now, we love labels. We're all about labels. <laughs> so knowing that this right here is called depression. This right here is called PTSD. Knowing that made it so much easier for me to talk about it. It took me a long time to finally talk about it and just clear. A lot of us 
um, aren't the best when it comes to showing vulnerability. And I hate that for us. Because we think that, well, something that I used to tell myself a lot was whatever this therapist or counselor or literally whatever this person can tell me, I've already told myself. Which, at the end of the day, I have. Because <laughs> I've always been so self-aware, which is one of you know, my strong suits and I'm so glad that I am. But it was so hard for me to let someone else in and let someone else talk me through it. Because they can tell me the same thing that I already told myself, but the main difference would be this person would not only help you by holding you accountable, but also, you know, look at it from a different perspective and help you navigate this route differently. One thing that I have discovered through therapy is control. <laughs> Not self-control, controlling. You know, I have the tendency, tendency of wanting control. I have a hard time giving up control. Whether it's, let's say something as simple as the decorating my apartment. I can talk about this now because I had to go through the work. People that know me from the past, I had this one friend that had brought it up and she was like, Esther, you are, you are controlling. And I took offense to it. I did, and that's one of the reasons why me and her fell off. Obviously, other things piled onto that. But she was the very first person that verbalized that. At least someone that I cared for, that actually finally verbalized that. And I was like, I took offense to it, because I was like, what are you talking about? Like, no. And then, after her, the only other person that verbalized it was my ex and he was like yeah and that's when it hit I was like okay <laughs> I knew that I was this way as far as like I knew that I acted a certain way but control is that what y'all think is that how y'all feel but now I have learned to navigate around that you know okay Esther, you cannot control everything and you're not supposed to control everything. I have a journal and one of my um, points on it was let go of control. It's so tiring, it's so draining, it's drained me almost my whole life. But I know now that the reason why I'm I've been like this, you know, has been because I couldn't count on people. So it was so much easier for me to control things because I knew what the outcome would be if I do it. Seeking help. Seek help. You know, seeking help doesn't make you weak. Seeking help doesn't, shouldn't be frowned upon. And even if it is, please remember that your mental health is your biggest asset. Because the biggest battle is not outwards. It really isn't. It's inwards. For um, my girlies out there with body dysmorphia, <laughs> I can talk about this because... Oof, I did not think I'd get this um, emotional. But anyway, um, I can talk about it because I have dealt with body dysmorphia all my life. I've always felt like I wasn't, at first it was like I wasn't big enough because <laughs> I was so skinny. I was called skin and bones growing up. I was tiny. Um, so it was, I wasn't big enough. And then growing up, I wasn't small enough. <laughs> so
So it's like, what the heck? Can I ever just be enough? Um, but yeah, so that's something that I dealt with. I had to convince myself that I am enough. I've had to, for me, one thing was I had to get off social media. And at one point um, on my 20th birthday, literally <clears throat> for about a whole month, I was off social media. I was in and out of Snapchat here and there just to text my friends back. But for the most part, I was off Instagram, I was off that because I knew that that was a trigger for me. When you go online, everything is filtered. Food is filtered, babies are filtered, water is filtered. And it's like, whoa, okay. For me, it was looking at all those bodies because growing up, I always wanted to be strong physically. I wanted the muscles, I wanted y'all to see this. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> until someone that was really close to me told me that men don't like manly women. <laughs> Looking back now, I feel like that's when it all started. And I didn't really care at that time. I was like, I don't care. I don't really want men anyway. But <laughs> when you go to high school and then you see all your peers or boyfriends and getting asked to prom and homecoming, you're like, oh, maybe I do want a boy. And then college pulls up and wow, I really want a boy. At <laughs> uh, one point, I would not wear. It took me so long to wear short sleeves that cut off because I ran track for the longest time. So I became very physically built. I had a six pack. I'll try to find a picture or a video, you know, for those that doubt, we've been there, done that. But <laughs> I, you could see it. So I, that became one of my insecurities was my biceps and my triceps. I did not like how huge and manly I looked. So I would, wear long sleeves, long sleeves. And if I'm wearing a short sleeve, it has to be cut off here. So it doesn't show, you know, the whole separation there. But um, now I'm still working on that. I eat what I want now, a lot more than I used to. And I tell myself that it's okay in moderation of course because last year was hard last year was really hard for me mentally you know fresh out of a relationship i am big on comparing the me now to the me back then rather than preparing the me now for the me that's coming Oof, that was deep <laughs> but um the me back then 18, 17, 18 years old, I was fit. You know, I still kind of am, but like I was fit. Like body fat, who's that? Never heard of her. But now I'm like a lot curvier. So throughout my life, I've always wanted to be curvier. And now that I'm curvier, it's still not enough. So I feel for you. I feel for my girlies out there with body dysmorphia. I feel for you and I'm so sorry that we put ourselves through that. Brings it back to in here. Cause this right here is your biggest enemy, but can also be turned into your biggest asset. So please, please, please take care of that up there. Lesson number four, I think. Avoid debt. Avoid owing someone anything. Avoid that. My ex's dad, what a great guy, um, very financial, financial literate, and he taught me a few things. 
one thing that I will carry on for the rest of my life is when you owe someone anything, you are a slave to them. You know, this is just me paraphrasing it. But not wrong. Avoid debt. When you are in your 20s, a lot of us, a lot of us want to show off the new car. A lot of us want to show off the new apartment. That's something I'm still working on, you know, the apartments and stuff. Because that's, for me, it's like I love coming home to a place that I adore. That's always been my thing. It will probably never go away, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Because that's different. This is like where I reside. This is where I sleep. This is where I find peace, you know. But when it comes to a car, sis, sister girl. They say that the second you drive off the lot, it depreciates. That means it loses value. So why would I buy something at $30,000 knowing that throughout the year, that car is only going to lose value unless, unless, keyword, unless you invest, you know, certain people use their cars and rent it out. That's smart. You can do it that way. Something I've done too, you know, I've done that with my car. So that's different. But for those that have big FOMO, fear of missing out, for those that have that, it's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. It's not worth it. So yeah, don't owe anyone anything. Obviously, people go through financial, you know, issues where they have to owe people. However, try your best to pay that off right away. This couch behind me, this year, the only financial, oh, <laughs> bad financial decision I've made this year so far has been this couch. But I've done really good because I just got it last month. So from January to September, I've been pretty good until I got that couch, but I'm okay with it. It's huge. I'll move everywhere I go. This baby's coming with me. You know, it's a long-term investment for me, at least. But paying it off. Lesson number five, I swear. If I mix my numbers up, just go with the flow. You know, it's number five. Dreams don't become a reality unless you work for them. I said it, you can't just sleep and expect your dreams to become a reality. Girlfriend, you know, I am a big believer in pretty privilege. I'm about to sound shallow for a little second here. Please allow me. I'm a big believer in pretty privilege. Have I used pri pretty privilege? Yes. Let's just call it PP. Have I used PP? Yes. To my advantage? Yes. However, I'm also a strong believer that PP will not get me to the top unless I sacrifice moral, unless I sacrifice mostly my morals. PP will not get me to the top unless I sacrifice my morals. And I'm not willing, that's one thing that I'm not willing to sacrifice because that kills who I am. You know, once I've killed who I am, then there's nothing left really. Then I'm just a person with no substance. So I like being a person with substance. Your dreams will not become a reality unless you work for them. I have a lot of dreams. I really do. I just want to do, I want to do it all. Obviously, I don't think I can do it all, but I will make sure that I do do it all. Lesson number six, stop caring what people think. Stop it. <laughs> Stop caring what people think. They don't pay your bills unless they do. Even if they do, still don't care as much. Those people that 
let other people's judgment or other people's opinion of them dictate their everyday life i feel sorry for you i used to be you i really used to be you i really was i wanted to fit in so bad that i sorry mom bait <laughs> i just told you guys i've never smoked or drank never probably never will but i vaped that's when you just in case she watches this that's when you basically let vapor in your mouth and you blow it but one thing that i made sure was i made sure it was zero nicotine but zero nicotine still has nicotine that's how these people want you to get addicted my senior year of high school that's when the pressure got so hard because everyone was like you're so lame like you don't do anything at least vape <laughs> and i was like well can i get addicted to this the questions i asked i was like can i get addicted to this they're like no is this bad for you no it's not even it's not nothing it's not nicotine it's just you're basically blowing smoke to seem cool so i did that and the only reason i did that did when my accent starts to come out crazy the only reason i did that was so i can fit in looking back now i'm like i girl <laughs> I don't need to do that. So I stopped. I only vaped for, I want to say, like two, three months max. And I stopped and I haven't since, you know. But back then, I compromised my morals. I compromised what I believed in. It started affecting me because I ran track. When you vape, I don't know the scientific explanation, but basically you get popcorn lungs. My lungs weren't as strong as they used to be anymore. So like I would only run for a small, you know, period of time and I already have sports induced asthma. So the harder I run, the worse it gets. But adding that to it made it even worse. So I'm not saying that vaping caused me to not be a great athlete anymore, but it participated. Stop caring what people think. Because at the end of the day, no one's ever satisfied with themselves. So what makes you think they'll be satisfied with you? Just being transparent they're not going to a lot of people really don't care and if someone makes you feel bad for the things that you don't have why are they in your life that's number seven lucky number seven this one sucks embrace failing please embrace failing you miss 90 percent 100 of the, <laughs> you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take this video will literally i won't i won't like cut it or clip it as much i really won't I'll try not to so you guys can really see this because i can't say em embrace failing and then not embrace failing um but anyway you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take i'm not saying you will always make those all those shots you're not but embrace that because then when you shoot you know my form when you shoot and you miss you know what you did wrong at least sometimes you do so your next shot either you go a lot slower you hold the ball a lot longer or you follow through more basically saying you learn from every failure you're supposed to learn from every failure because stupidity stupidity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results that's what stupidity is i'm not stupid <laughs> believe it or not i'm not stupid for the longest time i was stupid because i expected to not fail just because i did something a certain way so when i fail be like surprised but why you know i've always been really good at school high school middle school and i've always been really good till college mind you everyone says even my um psych teacher told me in high school that most of y'all will fail your first exam and i was like Psh. but guess who failed their first exam 
this girl, I got my very first C. It's not an F, it's a C. And I was like, whoo, whoa, this is, this is not good. I've never done this before. So it felt weird. But guess why I got the C and not an A or a B? I never studied. I didn't study, I didn't put in the work, I didn't put in the effort. So I expected myself to do the same thing that I used to do in high school, which was procrastinate and get a different result in college. That's not how it works. But anyway, embrace failure. I embraced the failure and then I studied more. So my next test, I got a B and then it got to an A. You know, that's the same thing with life. You cannot appreciate winning as much as you're supposed to appreciate winning unless you failed before. Lesson number eight. It's okay if things don't work out the way you want them to because there's always a reason you know there's always a reason why things don't work out and that's okay there's always a reason why the relationship didn't work out and that's okay there's always a reason why the friendship didn't work out or that investment didn't work out, or that job didn't work out, or that trip didn't work out, and that's okay. Don't beat yourself up. You know, God has amazing ways <laughs> of surprising us. God has different ways of protecting us. You know, sometimes we forget that, hey, He knows more than I do. We forget that. You know, and that's when things become very dangerous because you start to blame God. You start to, you know, go back and forth with Him. I don't know what's up there. <laughs> but you start to go back and forth with Him and He looks down and He's like, Am I not outside of time? Did I not create the beginning and the end? Did I not do that? So who are you to question me? It's okay, and it's me to myself. It's okay that the past didn't work out the way you wanted it to. It's okay. Listen, number nine. You can get money back. You can get some people back you can re-experience things but something that you will never get back is time time everyone hates that hates that you know because they're always like i wish i could go back in time and change something i wish i could go back in time and relive something i wish i could go back in time and say this or do this but you can't you can't take back time you can't rewind so if you're constantly looking back how will you ever appreciate the forward appreciate the future if you're always looking back if i'm always living in the past how would i ever appreciate this blessing of an apartment that i have if i'm always looking at the past and you know, looking back at the relationship that didn't work out how would I appreciate, you know? <laughs> I'm smiling right now because just a thought of that is like, it's something to look forward to, you know? When you're excited, you're like, you say, I'm looking forward to meeting you. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. I'm looking forward to being there because we're supposed to look forward because that's already gone. Yesterday is gone. Today is now. And I need to make it a point where I can appreciate them now. Recently, last Friday, I took a test and hmm, hopefully I passed. <laughs> but I took a test last Friday and you know, people that are like me, right after the test, you go on Google. You would try to type in, you know, different questions and see if you answer them right. And that's me. The second I walked out of the room, that it was me. 
did I get this right? Did I get this right? And then a voice in my head just told me, hey, even if you got it wrong, it still ain't gonna change nothing. <laughs> but I was like, whoa, that's true. Like, why am I stressing? The test is in the past. Do I hope I passed? Yes, I hope I passed. Your girl thinks you passed, but if I didn't, then that's okay. Failure, embracing, okay. But I was like, that's the very first time I ever just thought and stopped. You know, I was like, okay, I can go back and change it and that's okay. But anyway, looking back, makes you miss the now and then you don't get to appreciate the future number 10 and the very final one love yourself more i want to just stop there love yourself more when you love yourself you choose yourself i'm not saying be selfish i'm not a, personally i'm not a selfish person i can be but choose yourself, you know, love yourself because it's so hard to love someone when you don't even love yourself. So yeah, I wanna end this video by saying thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting me. I um, will upload more as I go, I really will. I'll stop filming more, this is fun. I can just sit here and talk to the camera, but um, I just want you guys to please um, watch this video with an open mind and see how you can apply these different lessons into your own life for everyone that's not 20 yet or that's you know approaching this period in your life. I know I'm only 21 but I've gone through a lot. <laughs> but um, please give yourself grace. You won't get it on the first try and you're not supposed to get it on the first try and that's okay. But let your failures be lessons and not setbacks. Lessons, okay? Love yourself more, really. Give yourself grace because you're human, you really are. We think that we're superhuman sometimes, which we can be sometimes, you know? But you're human. Choose positive, choose peace above it all because people come and go. You're supposed to. Some people stay forever, which those people were just, <laughs> God was like, I don't got enough space for angels. <laughs> Send them in your life. <laughs> but yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Stay unfiltered. Bye, you guys. Mm -hmm.